see the industry heading towards needing to produce a lot more material than what they're producing now. And I see a lot of limitations in the current technologies in terms of how they're scaling up or how they can scale up. And so I think there's going to be some big changes, some drastic changes. So I think downstream processes are going to change. I don't think we're going to be stuck in the standard protein A and a couple of column sort of approaches. I think there's going to be a lot of creativity, a lot of different kinds of things. At least, maybe not in five years, but you know, five, 10, 15 years. I think we're going to see some big changes by the demand of needing to have higher, higher throughput and also to drive lower costs. They're going to get more pressure from governments to lower cost, and that's going to be very hard to do with the existing kind of uh, technologies. I think they should invest in a couple of things. So, uh, well, pharma companies should invest in a couple of things. One of the things they should invest in is alternative downstream processes. I think that um, when you're looking at the current technologies uh, for columns, for example, they scale linearly. So I don't think we're going to continually get rid of columns, but there are a lot of alternative technologies such as precipitations and crystallizations that scale sublinearly. And so as you get to higher and higher amount of material that you need to produce for larger and larger patient populations, those are going to end up being much, much cheaper when you get to, to higher, higher, higher and higher amounts. The other thing that I think that companies should invest in is they should invest in first principles modeling. So currently the industry is very heavily data. So produce data, data, get empirical models. The problem with that is, I think it's good, when you first start, it's the right thing to do. But as you start to get more mature and you've got people with that capability, I think that you can transition a little bit less on the data people and transition more to people that actually build in first principles understanding. People that understand mass transfer, heat transfer, fluid flow, um, kinetics, whether it's biological kinetics or chemical kinetics. And I think if you move in that route, you'll develop processes much, much faster. Probably maybe a factor of five faster. I mean, really have much faster development times, much lower scale up risk. And I think that's really the, the direction that uh, companies should be doing. I think do it short, little at a time. Hire a few people, put them on good projects. They get a lot of, and get more confidence. And then I think they'll easily pay for themselves. And then the company will be confident and then they'll hire more people in, 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 in this space. So um, my advice for coming into this industry is to be very much on the, well, it depends on what their background is, but if they have a background that's conducive to learning data and modeling, I would say that's what they should be doing. Because what I see is like people out of my group and other similar groups that are producing people that know how to analyze biopharmaceutical data, these people have huge numbers of job possibilities. I mean, probably the number of jobs in that for someone who's good is probably 10 for one than if they're working in other parts. It doesn't mean the other parts aren't important, but the demand for people that really know, you know, really understand things, really can model things, really apply data in a really effective way, that is, uh, you know, is a, is a relatively small subset, at, the, at least at the PhD level. It's, it's a pretty, pretty small subset of people that, that have that kind of expertise. So I attended this conference for uh, two reasons. So one is because they asked me. So that was, that was one reason they asked me to speak. Um, but two is that I wanted to hit a, a somewhat of a different kind of person than I normally would hit. So, so I give a lot of invited talks at conferences. And so a lot of those conferences are for people that are more the, the sort of um, very technical, you know, let's say data, you know, modeling, you know, those kind of uh, uh, on the firing line kind of people that are working in development or their intermediate managers. So I felt that coming here, I might be able to hit perhaps a, a more managerial level, a little bit high te higher technical leader sort of level, and hopefully provide some evidence or some convincing that, that they should, um, uh, I don't know, maybe listen more to the people <laughs> that, that are like me that are encouraging uh, you know, building models and, and being more systematic about how you do development and, and so forth. So. The discussions, I wouldn't say it was completely unique, but most conferences don't quite do it in that way. I thought that was a good thing. I've, I've participated in those things. So those uh, things are very good. Um, I think that uh, one of the things I liked was that um, some of the people who spoke, they, um, they, they were, I would say, quite a bit more, a few of the people were quite a bit more leading edge than I expected. Um, usually for the conferences, it's not quite, um, 
usually I can sort of predict what they're going to say to a very high degree. But I was surprised a few times. You know, people said some very interesting things. Like one person was talking, of, like two people was explicitly talked about continuous manufacturing. Um, and they were people that were high up and knew what they were talking about. And they weren't trying to sell a product, right? These were people that were more users, right? That we're saying, okay, these are, you know, they're like pharma companies or, or like the, the former leader of, of BARDA, right? So, so these are people that, are, that have clear needs, right? So, and there are, many com there are many conferences you can go to where you have someone who's selling a product, which is fine. I mean, it's fine to have vendors sell products. We need vendors, otherwise you can't do anything. So, so they're important. Um, but but it's, I think it's more important uh, for this audience to hear the people that are, that are fairly high up in the companies that have the real needs. And if those needs um, really come across, and those vendors hit the needs, then you'll get, you know, you'll get an impact on technology, and then technology will move forward. So, so I thought it was it was nice having uh, some of the speakers have the foresight, you know, and have the sort of broader vision, uh, looking forward, than just sort of being, you know, being sort of myopic or being a little bit too focused on their own little thing. So, um, yeah, it's been pretty pretty good. Of course, it's very hard to fault. Well. My experience here has been very good. It's very hard to fault the uh, location, so <laughs> it's, it's very nice. Um, but also having a lot of time for discussion is, uh, is often what's, uh, uh, what's hard to do, and that's what they did uh, pretty, pretty effectively here. Um, a lot of the other conferences that have had discussion have felt a bit more like work, where it didn't feel as much about work. It felt more about networking, which I would prefer to do more networking and less about you know, just doing work, you know? <laughs> so you understand what I mean in terms of like, you know, they say, oh, you need to come up with the four things and we need to have this and this and this, which creates discussion, but then it's like you're doing homework for two hours instead of, you know, actually focusing on stuff that you care about and discussing stuff you care about, so. I think, I talked about a lot of things in my presentation, but I think that if I was thinking about the shorter term, you know, directions or shorter term impact, I think that moving towards first principles modeling is the first sort of shorter term impact. I think that um, doing that will provide benefits rather quickly. Um, so you really want to bring those people into the development stage, so fairly early, and so that they can really accelerate process development, and you'll be able to see the gains there pretty fast. Um, it's also good to put them there because they will, um, they will do it for a lot of compounds, including ones that aren't successful, right? So there'll be lots of opportunities for sort of doing that and they can develop a sort of automated technology. So, so I think my point, the point I made about first principles modeling, I think that that uh, should be increased. I know some companies are already doing that. I think that that should uh, continue. Um, for the longer term, um, I didn't talk about the downstream as much because of the limit of time, but I think there's a lot of innovation that could be done there. Um, there's already a lot of innovation in bioreactors. And, I, and, and so there's a lot of people doing different cell lines and different kinds of configurations. I think that's also important. But I would say, in, and, and there's been a lot of advances, but I'd say there's, it's been more mature, I would say. It's not really mature in the sense that things are being developed, but I would say it's better developed. That's probably a better way of saying it. It's better developed than if you look what's in downstream. Downstream, we're basically doing the same thing for the most part done 50 years ago. I mean, not quite 50 years ago. There's been some improvements, but but I think that the, the potential benefit there is a lot bigger. So I would have liked to talk about that, but I didn't have time to talk about that. But, um, so, but I did talk about, yeah, first principles modeling. So I think that that, that should be a, a little investment will go a long way. So.